Hello guys, today we are going to talk about the oral lichen planus. So this is the immunological disease where there is a presence of white lines called stria. As you can see in the picture, in the oral cavity there are a lot of white lines and these are called stria. So this was discovered by Wilson in 1869 and later we can give the characteristic of white stria. So if you are new to this channel, please like and subscribe, that would be highly appreciated. So let's get started with the definition. So it is the chronic immunological inflammatory mucocutaneous disorder that varies in appearance from keratotic to erythromatous and ulcerative. So this is the chronic disease, so it occurs in a long duration of time and it occurs mostly in the mucocutaneous sites like a mucous membrane or skins and the if you see its appearance it varies from it varies like it could be keratotic means there could be like a dead cells or it could be erythromatous like a, there's a red patch or red areas or there could be ulcers and there may be pain, inflammation, or discomfort. So when you have uh, erythematous and ulcers, there may be pain, inflammation, and disorder, discomfort. So this is the common disorder of stratified squamous epithelium. Let's see its etiolo etiology. So the most common accepted theory suggests that oral lichen planus is T-cell mediated inflammatory disease in which there is cytokine production and which leads to apoptosis. So this is the most common accepted pathogenesis of oral lichen planus. So oral lichen planus trigger the T cell and and this causes the release of cytokines. So as the cytokine is there causes apoptosis of the cells and leads to destruction of the cells. So this is the most accepted uh, pathogenesis of oral lichen planus. Also, there are some predisposing factors that contribute to the oral lichen planus, such as genetic background or autoimmune disease, and also immunodeficiencies. Also, some drugs trigger the oral lichen planus. Also, dental materials, such as if you have ill-fitting denture or or if the if there is overbites, and this may trigger the oral lichen planus. Also, viral infections such as herpes, HIV, human papilloma virus could trigger the oral lichen planus. And stress also could trigger the oral lichen planus. And also Greenspan syndrome. So in Greenspan syndrome, there is a diabetes mellitus and hypertension along with uh, oral lichen planus. Let's see the clinical features. So it is the most dermatological condition with oral manifestation. So oral lichen planus is the most common type where there is a skin condition as well as oral manifestation. It occurs both in skin as well as oral cavity. And one third of the lesions show oral lesion. So oral lichen planus, one third of the lesion has oral condition. And it occurs at the age of 40 to 60 years of life. And if you see the sex, it is more common in female than male because uh, female are mostly female has more stress compared to male and also sight are on the buccal mucosa that is cheeks or it could be on the tongue gingiva lips and there is a series of radiating line white stria is present which is called wickham stria or honeyton list so if you see the picture of uh, oral lichen planus you can see the series of radiating line here or here these are called honeyton list or wickham stria so white stria are present in the oral lichen planus and 40 percent occur in oral and cutaneous surface so if you see the number 40 percent occur both in oral and cutaneous surface while 35 percent occur in the cutaneous only and 25 percent occur in oral mucosa only and the types of oral lichen planus so there are six types they are reticular type, erosive type, atrophic type, plaque-like type, and papular and bullous type. So the first one is reticular type. So this is the most common type of oral lichen planus. 
and it consists of numerous raised thin white lines. As you can see, it has numerous thin white lines, and these are called honey tonglets or Wickham stria. So there are uh, presence of numerous white lines, as you can see here. And also, these lines are wavy. If you see the these lines, these lines are not perfectly straight. They are kind of wavy. Also, they are kind of parallel with each other line. So these lines are wavy and parallel. And also, lesions are asymptomatic. So these lesions, they are usually asymptomatic. That is, there is no pain and inflammation. And they are bilaterally, means that occur on the both side of the cheeks. Not only on the one side, but both side. And the next one is erosive type. So this is the symptomatic, means there is a pain and inflammation. Also, pain and burning sensation, as there is a, it, as it is in uh, symptomatic, so obviously there will be pain and burning sensation. Also, atrophic area with central ulceration. So you can see in the picture, there is atrophic area as in here. And usually there is a central ulceration around here, but it is not shown in here. And periphery of atrophic region are bordered by white radiating stria. So if you see the periphery, these are usually bordered by white radiating stria in the erosive type. So you can see these are bordered by white, red, white stria. And the next one is erosive type. So clinically, this is present as a smooth erythematous area. So you can see here, it is present as a smooth red area. As you can see in the picture, there's a presence of smooth and it is red in area, red in color. Also, uh, the erythematous area is with or without peripheral radiating stria. So these erythematous area, there may or may not be presence of peripheral white lines it there could be presence for or, or also could be absent also there is a burning sensation as it is symptomatic so it there is a pain and burning sensation and it mostly occur in the gingiva and buccal mucus so this mostly occur in the cheeks also mostly on the gingiva area and the next one is plaque type so this is present as a raised or flat white area so this, uh, this is uh, usually present as a raised or flat area, not like a line, but a, a plaque type, flat, flattened area. And mostly affect the dorsal, dorsum of the tongue, like dorsal surface of the tongue. So this mostly occur on the, uh, like a, on the dorsum surface of the tongue. And it usually resemble the leukoplakia. It occurs just like leukoplakia. And the next one is papular type. So it is uh, present in initial phase and as a small white dot and usually asymptomatic. So these are present at the initial phases where there is a small white dots and you, they are not painful. Next one is the bullous type. So this is the rare form and characterized by large vesicular bulla. So in the bullous type, there is a presence of uh, blisters like called vesicular bulla. Vesicles are small while if it is large, it is called bulla that is filled with fluid. Also, lesion develop and rupture, leaving painful ulcer. So sometimes when this lesion, they rupture, uh, they, it become very painful ulcer. Let's see the histological features. So it could be either hyperparakeratosis or hyperorthokeratosis. So hyperparakeratosis means in this uh, stratum corneum layer, like upper layer, uh, there is a presence of dead cells, but the nucleus are still retained. So here, the in the stratum corneum layer, there is a presence of dead cells. But as you can see, the purple stain here, these are all nucleus. The nucleus are still present here. So this condition is called hyperparakeratosis. While in hyperorthokeratosis, there is a presence of dead cells in the stratum corneum layer, and the nucleus are also lost. So when there is a loss of uh, nucleus, and this condition is known as hyperorthokeratosis. So it could be either of them. Also, there is an acanthosis of spinous layer. So in the middle, we have a spinous layer here. And the, there is an acanthosis of spinous layer. Means the spinous layer number increases. So there is an increase in this spinous layer. Also, there is a liquefaction necrosis of basal layer. So 
here is the basal layer and there's uh, this basal layer undergoes liquefaction necrosis that means these basal cells they partially undergoes necrosis and they become liquid like substance and this line is called max joseph space so as they undergo liquefaction necrosis so this line is called max joseph space also the ritty ridges or ritty pegs become sawtoothed as you can see the shape of the ritty ridges they usually resemble to the sawtooth so they are called sawtoothed ritty ridges also seabed bodies is seen that means there is a calcification of hyaline tissues and juxta epithelial band of lymphocytes so this is the epithelium and just beneath it as you can see there is a plenty of lymphocyte infiltration so just beneath the epithelium there is a lymphocyte infiltration and this is called juxta epithelial band of lymphocytes let's see the syndromes that are associated with oral lichen planus so it, it is associated with Greenspan syndrome so in Greenspan syndrome there is a presence there is a diabetes mellitus and hypertension as well as lichen planus and it also graham little syndrome so in graham little syndrome there is a loss of hairs from the scalp or uh, and also axilla and grain region also vulvolo vaginal vaginal gingival syndrome so uh, it affect the vagina gingiva area and the differential diagnosis of oral lichen planus are the lichenoid reaction so in the lichenoid reaction it usually occur on the one side while in lichen planus it usually occur on the both side and also lichenoid reaction are usually caused due to dental uh, materials while the oral lichen planus it is caused by many things and it could be also oral leukoplakia so oral leukoplakia is caused by mostly smoking while uh, oral lichen planus it is a immunological disease so there are many causes also frictional keratosis in a frictional keratosis there is a history of uh, trauma or, or cheek bitings but in oral lichen planus there is no such history and it could be also candidiasis candidiasis is a fungal disease and also erythema multiforme so erythema multiforme it's another immunological disease and that resembles with the oral lichen planus let's see the treatment so absolutely there is absolutely no treatment of oral lichen planus so uh, this oral lichen planus cannot be uh, cured completely but they can be treated as symptomatically so if there is no symptoms no active treatment is required except reassurance review and regular follow-up also conservative management of oral lichen can be done so with corticosteroids usually topical corticosteroids are used and systemic cortico uh, corticosteroids are avoided because it causes the anal supp uh, adrenal suppression also retinoids can be used retinoids are the uh, derivatives of vitamin A and they are usually used for asymptomatic oral lichen planus also cyclosporin and tacrolimus are used as they are immunosuppressant drugs so to suppress the immune so they are used also griseofolvin can be used for erosive lichen planus